a kickoff of the of the holiday celebration with Alicia sharing some of the traditions from her home country. And mm -hmm. after Alicia finishes the presentation, uh, you all are welcome to share anything you wish about your own traditions or celebrations as you um, you know do them in your area. Um, so um, welcome everyone. Um, continue to share with other ITHF members that uh, we are continuing to do this for all. Mm -hmm. We have programs all the way through August of 2023. So oh, we, wow. we do have an exciting uh, season coming up for the 2023 year. And um, we do hope that you continue to join us at least once a month. So mm -hmm. I'll leave, uh, if you have at the end any comment, feel free to write them in the chat and that uh, we will stay as a group since we're a small cozy group today. And uh, um, let's see, welcome Michael from, oh, so you're also from British Columbia. Mm -hmm. Michael, yeah? Yeah. Michael, yeah, and, yeah, and uh, welcome. Uh, you know, we have people from all over, so this is really nice. <laughs> so Alicia, please take over. Okay. So let me make sure that I am sharing my presentation. And yes, let you are. Yes. And let me go just to the slides. Uh, so we only see the slides here. There it is. Can you see it, everybody? Yes. yes. Yeah. Very, Very nice. Good. Yes, we do. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to share this part of uh, our holidays. This is one of the traditions that uh, we have in Mexico. And, uh, and I'm really, really glad to do this because by doing this presentation, I have to tell you, I also learn a lot about things about my country that mm -hmm. I might, might have or have not known before. But let me just start where, how did Christmas start? How did Christmas start in, the, in, the, in all the countries that, that celebrate? When it says that the oldest, oldest and most important is the, is the oldest and most important celebration around the world. And it seems that it started uh, in um, in uh, uh, about 2,000 years. The, the Christmas has been celebrated on the the Christmas Eve on this December 24th and Christmas Day on the 11th, 25th. And believe it or not, the the birth of Jesus is really one of the great mysteries just yet to be solved. The early Christians believed that the that the Christmas was uh, the 25th between March and October, and not necessarily December. It could not have been the Jews, the Jews who said that, uh, you know, that the birth of Jesus was in December, because the Jews sent their flocks of sheep into the deserts in March, and they wouldn't be back until the herds didn't return until early fall. That's when the sheep would be grazing. And that will be around October the 21st, 25th at the latest. There's a dubious claim because there's no proof that Pope Julius uh, in, in Rome in 350 or 352 declared December 25th. This was during the Roman Empire. It was during this, the Romans Saturn, Saturn winter solstice celebrations. So Christmas really displays the pagan festivities in December because it was easier for them, for the Romans to convert to Christianity. And then December 25th was officially declared as the day of, uh, of Jesus Christ's birth. In Mexico, how did it start? When and how did it start? Well, in Mexico, really, as you will find with many, I'm sorry, as you will find with many other celebrations in Mexico, it's, um, it's really a combination of Aztec beliefs and Christian beliefs. The Aztec uh, the, during the Aztec time in the 11th century, the most important celebration for, the, for them was the, uh, well, for our, my people, I should say, it was the Aztec empire worshiping Chilopochtli, which was the God of War, and this was during the winter solstice. And they celebrated this year after year after year. But then when the Spanish arrived in Mexico, which was uh, you know, before 1582, of course, but 
In 1582, the winter solstice was proselytized by Spanish missionaries and they reinvented the religious pageant in Mexico to teach Jesus' birth story, to blend with the times that the Aztecs celebrated the worshiping of which supposedly was easier than to convert the, the Mexicans into Catholicism. And so today, just like the December 12, the Virgin of Guadalupe, which is probably the Virgin of Guadalupe, the December 12 and Christmas are the most important religious celebrations in Mexico, which is a mixture of indigenous and Catholic celebrations. And some, some other time, I, I hope next December, I can tell you the, the, uh, if the story about the Virgin of Guadalupe. And here you have a picture from our, from our very famous Diego Rivera muralist, which is known all over the world, of what he depicts as the original Nar people when they were still being, being proselytized by the Spanish already celebrating the, posa the posadas, and I'll tell you about it a little bit more later. And the important components of Christmas celebration in Mexico, which goes from December the 16th to the 25th, we have a long celebration of Christmas. The nativity scene, we start with the nativity scene. You see it in churches, in homes, when we have the nativity scene, which is uh, um, uh, how would I say, a representation of a town of Bethlehem where Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ was born. We also have, from the very beginning, from the 16th, the flower of Nochebuena, which is the Christmas Eve flower, which we call the poinsettia. And as you have seen now in the USA and other parts of the world, this is something that we begin to put in our houses as soon as, as soon as December starts, or even about December, the beginning of December. We also have what is called La Posadas, and I will tell you about that. Posada means in Spanish, in or shelter, from December 16th through the 24th. We also have Las Pastorelas, which in Mexico start, I would say they become more famous from the 20th to the 24th, near Christmas Eve. We have the Noche Buena, which is the Christmas Eve on December 24th. Then of course we have Christmas Day on the 25th. And then we have Dia de los Reyes, which is on January 6th, when the three kings, um, the three kings came to uh, bring the gifts to, to baby Jesus. And then we have Dia de la Candelaria, which I will explain until February 2nd. So in Mexico, Christmas lasts from December the 16th through, this, through February the 12th. That's quite a long time, isn't it? One of the most important things that we have in, in Mexico is the nativity scene, which you will see it, as I said, in churches and in homes. And this is a very important uh, uh, display. And it's more important than Christmas trees. It hasn't been until, I would say, you know, the, the Christmas trees is a, a, a US and European influence. But I have to tell you, I did not grow up with Christmas trees. I grew up with nativity scenes. They, we set the nativity scenes in homes and churches, the December 16, and the most important figures remain until February 2nd, the Dia de la Candelaria. The most important figures are Mary and Joseph, some stable animals, angels who guard the venture, Peasants, infant Jesus, which is added after midnight mass on the 24th, and then the three kings added on December the 5th. And then we take it down on Calendarias Day, uh, which is the 2nd of February. The um, you will see here that um, oh, I'm trying to bring the next uh, the next slide, and sometimes this is what happens. There it is. Here you have an example of the nativity scene. This is what you will see in the homes. We all put our nativity scene many ways. You see an example here, you have another one here. I'm sorry, here we go. You have another one over here. And then 
this is the one that we that you will see on the 25th when the baby Jesus is born. That's when we put the baby Jesus in the manger. You know that the flor of Nochebuena, we start putting the flor of Nochebuena since uh, the December 16th in Mexico, or now it's even earlier since then December 1st. I already had my Nochebuenas out in my house, the Chris de Poinceras. It's a native flower of Mexico and Central America. The Mexicans, it's, it's, it's a ritual. It's the symbol of purity, new life and integrity of deceased warriors. So you can see since the time of the Aztecs, we had the poinsettia. The meaning is the most beautiful. And it was used in, since the colonization of America as a Christian decoration during the Christmas because of the crimson color of the leaves. In the 19th century, Joel Robert Poinsett, the first US ambassador to Mexico, began to spread to US and other places the flower. And that is why in US and, and throughout other the parts of the world is known as the poinsettia in his honor. And there you have it. We have poinsettias in red, white, and pink, as you probably have seen in, in many places. Now, what's Las Posadas? What is it all a Las Posadas? Well, Las Posadas, the origin of the Las Posadas originated in colonial Mexico in 1586. And we have the evidence, we have proved that this is the truth by the Augustines. And the Augustine friar Diego de Soria requested Pope Sixtus V the papal permission to start the Misas of the Aguinaldo or Christmas bonus masses. So that these were Christmases that were celebrated from the 16th through the 24th. Every night people will go to the church. The significance is that um, one of the many examples, as I, mentioned, as I mentioned, mentioned before, that the Catholic religion in Mexico was adapted to make it easier for indigenous people to understand and blend with their earlier beliefs, our, our Mexican beliefs, our Aztec beliefs, our Mexica, like we call it. The meaning is that the representation of Mary and Joseph's journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem and in search for accommodation, finding a place to stay. And the nine days signif signify the nine months that Mary carried Jesus in her womb. Who participates in Las Posadas? Lots of people. First of all, there's two people dressed as Mary and Joseph usually children, usually. A donkey, angel sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. In my neighborhood, there were always the three of them, Mary on the donkey uh, going from place to place. The neighbor residents get together and on the street of or one of the streets on our, on our, on our neighborhood, we have a nacimiento, which is the, the, you know, the depiction of Mary Joseph and the manger. And, and, and we, we have the, the rosary every day from the 16th to the 24th. And at the end of the praying the rosary, the neighborhood residents with, it, with lit candles walk down the streets of the neighborhood singing Christmas carols and stopping at three different homes first. The songs that are sung at each home are to show the people who are outside asking for a place to stay, which is Mary, Joseph, the angels, and the people you see some pictures, and the inside group, which were the, the innkeepers, the owners of the places that some, that three of them would not welcome Mary and Joseph. They would tell them to go away and find other place. They were too busy. Until the fourth home is the one that welcomes Mary and Joseph. And this is the host home. And what happens is, Three or four different residents from our neighborhood uh, agreed to provide food and aguinaldos, and I'll explain to you what that is, as a treat every night for the nine days. And then after the, Jesus and uh, Mary and, and Joseph are welcomed into the fourth house, we get aguinaldos, which is a, a treat. And of course, we break the traditional piñata and we receive the aguinaldos. And then on the night of Christmas, we have postponed, uh, and we have uh, every night, every night, 
we have ponche, we we'll just show you what it is. And in some houses, you may have tomates and pozole. You may or may not, but the 24th for sure, there will be tamales and, there will be tamales and pozole. And I'll show you that. There you have the pictures of the people. Here are the people with candles and fireworks on the streets asking for a place for Mary and Joseph. Here you have Mary and Joseph. If you have them with the angels, sometimes we have somebody uh, playing. And here you have a, a little monkey, not a real one. In my neighborhood, we had a real one. One of the neighbors, one of the neighbors will provide his uh, his donkey, and the little girl dressed as Mary will be riding it. And you have here some examples also of the you know of the neighborhood uh, asking for a place for Mary and Joseph to stay. The aguinaldos, after you, we, uh, you know, we pray the rosary, we go and ask for a place to stay. The family welcomes Mary and Joseph. We go inside, we, we sing carols of welcoming to Mary and Joseph, all welcoming carols. And then we get the aguinaldos, which is a paper or plastic bag filled with peanuts, guava, a mandarin, colaciones, which is a Mexican round spiky sugar candy, and a piece of sugar cane. We also get a napkin or a small play, plain paper basket filled, filled with colaciones, which is the candy, and the small sugar cookies. This symbolized the rewards from heaven. If the family is a little bit more wealthier, it's a wealthy family, you get really fancy little baskets with the candy as part of the aguinaldos. And here you have the typical bag of aguinaldo the Mexican tree, and you see the, the uh, sugar cane, the mandarin, the, the peanuts, the cookies, and the colaciones, which as mentioned to you, is a small spiky candy. And of course, after all that, we have the breaking of the piñata. Now the breaking of the piñata has a significance because the piñata has, uh, uh, the children break the piñata and it has seven points. And you can see here, the children. Here you have all the neighbors uh, watching the, the breaking of the piñata. It has seven points that are meant to symbolize the seven deadly sins. And we break them for seven days. Uh, the, the days that the, the piñata, the nine, the nine nights that the piñata, that the posadas last. And they are filled with mandarins and guavas and candy. And the, the ones that are released from the piñata symbolize the rewards from heaven. And to stay warm and cozy, as you can see, that's where we serve the ponche, primarily to the adults. And there you have the ponche. It's made with, uh, it's an ar aromatic fruit punch that includes sweet, a sweetener called piloncillo, uh, water, cinnamon, and fruits such as guavas, tejocotes, these are the tejocotes, guavas, oranges, sugar cane. There you, that you have that, that, this is the guava right there. This is the waba that we that we have um, every time, every night. Then also, as I mentioned, from the 20th, around the 19th, 20th of December until the 24th, we have the pastorelas, which are plays representing the journey of the shepherds to Bethlehem, you know, to adore the baby Jesus. And the plot of the play is that the shepherds overcome the devil's obstacles to be able to get there. And they succeed with help from the angels and the shepherds then can give their gifts to baby Jesus at his manger. And you can see here, here is the pastorella, here is the play, you can see them. And here is you have uh, the little devil trying to, you know, just try showing the, the, the people who participate in the pastorellas. There's the devil. And then we have the Noche Buena. The Noche Buena, which is Christmas Eve, we start a little bit, a uh, little bit later, 11, 11.30. We have a late rosary, the praying, the Christmas carols that we do every night, the singing. And then at around 12 p.m., the baby Jesus is wrapped on a very special, very special large handkerchief, which our elders hold by the ends. And uh, it's primarily our grandparents and our parents. And we sing the songs, all of us sing the songs about the birth of Jesus. And the baby Jesus then is placed in the manger at, at, at midnight and we hurry to midnight class because we gotta go to, to the, what we call Misa de Gallo, 
which is, <laughs> you know, the, the rooster, that's the rooster because it's so early. And then afterwards, we have the family dinner, the Christmas celebration. We have bonfires outside our homes, which is bonfire. We have the record player or whatever. Now the younger kids use that uh, thing that they can use with the phones to play the music. And my friends, we dance until five o'clock in the morning. It's a long day. We get up late the next day, uh, maybe 10, 11 o'clock. And we, and we eat around midday the leftovers from the day before. And then the baby Jesus is placed in the manger, as I mentioned, on the 24th. And this is what we eat on Christmas Eve. We, of course, the traditional tamales. This is, this is a must. The pozole, which is a must, is corn and, 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 and the head of a pig. My daughter, when she saw the head of the pig, she started screaming because she, she was so scared of it. But that's how we make the pozole. This is a white pozole. We also have a red pozole that we make with uh, red peppers. The buñuelos, which is a, a, a dough, is a um, dough that we make out of uh, flour and we fry it, we extend it, we fry it, fry it, and that's the famous buñuelos. And of course, we have to have the punch. Now, on Christmas Eve, as you can imagine, the adults, with the adults, during the bonfire, we, we drink a spicy, spicy tequila with ponche, the tequila in the ponche, or brandy. Uh, that's usually what we put in the pan in, with the adults, only the adults. Then after that, after we celebrate Christmas Eve, we have the next step, which is the Dia de los Reyes, January the 6th, when we celebrate the three wise men coming to the manger to present the gifts to, to baby Jesus. But unlike the USA, until recently, primarily the wealthy families celebrate Christmas by giving the ch their children presents. But that is not a Mexican tradition. I grew up with the January the 5th, when we put our shoes outside. And by the way, this is the entrance of a of a house of a, somebody who has money. Not in my house, my house was not like this. So you have the shoes where we put the, 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 the letter to the, to the three wise men asking them for what we want for Christmas, for, for, for present. We leave them water in this case, because as I said to you, it's a wealthy family, it's milk, but we usually give, it, give a, a glass of water and we put some hay for the, for the camels to have something to eat so that they, you know, they are hungry, they are thirsty. And then we get the presents. And the next day we get up just like the children here at Christmas time. So we get up at three o'clock in the morning to see what the, what the three kings uh, men left us. And hopefully it was what we wanted. And I have to tell you, here you see little, little children with their Christmas present. And you can see these are not, these are very modest families. And here you have a much better off family, the children receiving this Christmas. And believe it or not, now we have just like Santa Claus here. Now we have men dressed as the three wise men so that they can have their picture taken with the children. This is not a celebration in my time. Uh, it's just, I think uh, because they see what's happening Christmas in the USA, that Mexico is adopting this, but this is not part of our tradition. It's just a newer thing. But the children love to have their picture taken. And what the heck, let's do it. You can see here then our, our nacimiento. We then change the nacimiento to make sure the, the nativity scene to add that the, that the three wise men have come to bring the presents to, Jesus, to baby Jesus on the sixth. And Mexico, the Mexican government, you're looking at the, at the Zocalo, which is Mexico City main public plaza and one of the largest in the world. The Mexican government now has the Rosca de Reyes, which I will explain to you in a minute, for 100,000 people every year that come and eat the Rosca de Reyes. This is a tradition in my country where uh, 
before we used to make the Rosca de Reyes, not in the oven, but in, in different way. And now you can buy it in the bakery. Not many people bake it anymore because at that time when I was a little girl, we didn't have ovens. And then inside the Rosca de Reyes, you have little dolls, plastic dolls that signify baby Jesus. And you can see one over here. And we eat, everybody in the family cuts a piece. And whoever gets this little, this little doll is responsible for providing the tamales and the atole on the, on this, on uh, cal, uh, the calendarias day, February the 2nd. And this is Dia de la Candelaria in Mexico. This is the baptism of, of baby Jesus. So before we take baby Jesus to the church, to the mass, here is you have everybody going into mass. You have women waiting to get into mass. We, we dress the baby Jesus with a dress. We each buy our, our dress. And you can see all the different baby Jesuses that everybody brings to that. And we have the mass. And we also celebrate the Virgin of the, cal of the, the Calendaria Virgin, which is really just, a, what would I say? It's just a, a way for how the Spaniards uh, introduce uh, Virgin Mary to, to Mexicans uh, as part of the as part of the um, as part of the Christmas. So the, in, uh, this is a, a, a Marian invocation of the Catholic Church that is found in in several countries, not just in Mexico. But his arrival in Mexico took place shortly after the Spanish colonization of the Aztec lands, as I said, to make it easier for the the Mexicans to be uh, to, to accept the Christian religion. And that's pretty much what you see in the, in the celebration of Christmas in Mexico. Thank you very much for allowing me to share this with you. I'm sure, I hope to share with us to you to share with us some of your important holidays or celebrations in, in your country. And I leave you with the Rotary message that we are all here to bring peace and goodwill and so let the world be filled with peace and goodwill. Thank you. If you have any Amen. questions, let That was very, very excellent. This, this is uh, Rotarians from around the world. Yes. <laughs> you know, it, uh, let me, let me uh, take my, my chat and, and, and uh, stop the share. There we are. Oh, there we are. Yes. So I hope that, um, that it was something that you enjoyed. Yeah, it was excellent. It, it, it was terrific. terrific. Yes, it was. Alicia, can I ask a question about, um, so you were explaining how the, it sounds like the entire community goes through all of this celebration, but is there a time in, in individual families where um, when the children are very young, uh, that the, the mother or the father reads them the Christmas story? Do they grow up reading and learning about that? Or do they is everything done as a big celebration in the community? It's really done as a big celebration. But now in the more recent times, and, and I do have to say to you, because I, um, I am very fortunate and very blessed to be in this country. And I came with Rotary and Rotarians are responsible for me being here. But when I grew up, we know we did not have, we had basically the, 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 the tradition that the Las Posadas, that Mary had to do this. This is why we have the Posadas and baby Jesus, but the significance of Christ in our lives, of course, is there. And, Absolutely. And, yes, yes. I think that's such an important factor that you brought up that it wasn't the, your Christmas there is not about gifts and commercialism and going to malls. It's really about this community and family oriented devotion to Jesus Christ. Uh, yes. That is just such a wonderful thing to hear. Great. It really is. Believe me, it really is. Yeah, it's great. Too bad you don't live back there. You live in the United States now. <laughs> it's, it's completely different here. <laughs> yeah. Any questions or did, did did pretty much give you a good idea of how we celebrate. It was wonderful. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. All Thank that you. food. What do people do in your, I don't want to hog this, but I just ask, this is 
kind of a stupid question, but what do people, you were talking about that look like soup that was made out of a pig's head. So what do people do in your community that are vegetarians? Do they just bypass that? Well, let me tell you, when I was growing up, we did not have vegetarians. <laughs> oh, well, when I was growing up, we didn't have them either. <laughs> but, but my time, we, we crave this thing. I remember yeah. when I brought my daughter for the first time, she was only two years old when I brought her to Mexico for Christmas yeah. and she sees my, my, you know, my brother carrying the big head all washed and everything. <laughs> she starts screaming. Ah! I know, I, I would too. <laughs> I've never seen a big head. No. But I grew up with that. So to me. Sure. Well, I was, didn't, I, I'm in your same age group. So I didn't grow up with vegetarians either, but it it's really. A big thing, yes. as you know, in our country. Yes. So yeah. I, I couldn't, I really don't know because I only go to Mexico and every, every, every other year I, I spend Christmas and the, and the tradition has not changed. It's oh, that's same. good. That's it's good to know. Maintain that culture and that tradition. That's wonderful. I hope so. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Well, thank you very much, Ligia. Back to you. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yes, so I am sure that after hearing Alicia, although you don't have to make a presentation like hers, perhaps uh, everyone, um, you know, since it's such a small group, mm -hmm. everyone could share a little bit about what their holiday traditions are, because, you know, we all, depending on which country we come from or we live in, uh, we celebrate the different type of holidays uh, slightly different. So how about if I start by asking Patty? Me? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, okay. You know, I, I see of the nine or 10 people here, a lot of us are uh, from the United States, are living in the United States. And as you probably know, then, our traditions are quite different than what Alicia was saying. Um, but I'll talk about when I grew up, and hopefully it's still the same for some of the people today. When I grew up, um, we had the Christmas tree, which Alicia said they didn't do Christmas trees, but and a lot of presents, everybody gave presents, but we did have a tight family unit where people always came together at, for sure on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And we didn't have our big dinner on Christmas Eve. We had it on Christmas Day and we opened presents on Christmas morning, but Christmas Eve, was more of a party atmosphere with family and friends. People stopped by wishing everybody a Merry Christmas, but we didn't open any presents and we just mostly had hors d'oeuvres. So um, I was fortunate because when I was a kid growing up, it was all very family oriented. We had wonderful times with our families and our grandparents and um, kids loved, you know, loved being together as a family. And we all went to church. And uh, I didn't start going to midnight mass until I was an adult. But when I was a kid, we did it on Christmas morning. I'm a Catholic too. And I, I assume that Alicia yes. is probably Catholic from being from Mexico. So I, I understand about some of those Catholic traditions. And, you know, Christmas was a very special time. It really was. But that was when I was a kid. Now I go on a cruise. <laughs> You see how it's changed? You see how life has changed? We all get older and our families are spread out all over the United States. Whereas in some of these um, South American and Spanish cultures, I think the families tend to stay together a little bit more. And that's really nice. But, you know, it's hard to travel, uh, to go see everybody. So our Christmases have changed quite a bit over the years. Anyway. Let's Thank you, Patty. Back. You're welcome. Um, okay, <laughs> so I'm going to move now to Leslie. Well, um, uh, ours is, I guess, a little bit um, American too these days with probably the focus being on gift giving and frantic spending and so on. Um, Australia's become much more a secular and multicultural society. So I guess the the role of the um, church is very much diminished, but it's still a family time and it's still uh, almost a conflict of who's going to be in which house for Christmas dinner and so on. And it becomes a little bit um, difficult that way. 
Um, we have, I guess, all the, you know, the trappings of Christmas when the children are around with, you know, Christmas trees, houses in many streets are illuminated with um, new, you know, totally, totally um, covered in lights and plastic centers and so on. Um, so, I mean, that, that maintains a little bit of the festivity. But um, I suppose the big difference is for us, of course, is that it is summer holidays. So schools finish for their summer holidays. Well, most of them are winding up now and it will be end of next week is the end of school for, for the summer holidays for all children. And so a lot of people are focusing more on what they're going to be doing during the summer holidays than they are on Christmas, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, we in Melbourne this year, you know, we just can't anticipate what the weather's going to be. It's been a terrible, a terrible um, spring period where one day it will be 34 and the next day it will be 14. So uh, it's it's um, a little bit difficult to anticipate what's what the weather's going to be. But um, as I said, it's just probably because we are now midsummer. It is quite a different circumstance. Um, but, you know, uh, having originally British origins, most people will sort of be thinking, well, we'll have the turkey and we'll have the hot plum pudding, even if it is, even if it is a, you know, a 35 degree day when, when the time comes. So that's the way it is. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Right. Uh, let me see. How about um, Michael from British Canada? British Columbia, Canada. Our, our situation is much the same as in the States and Australia. Um, we, we do some things a little differently um, in our family. All of our, we have three children and they're all the way from home. One of the things that we really enjoy doing as three separate families is we go out in the woods and cut down our own Christmas tree. And uh, that's, a, that's a, a fun activity. And it oftentimes will involve having to wear snowshoes because you're tromping through four or five feet of snow as you go to uh, select your tree, which is a, a unique thing I think that, that we get to do here. Um, and we usually cut our tree down the first week in December and um, in our case, we put it in the garage for a day or two to sort of acclimatize and warm up. And then we bring it inside and over three or four nights, we, we uh, decorate it and put the lights on it. And we have it up until, until the first weekend in January. Um, and, and that's an important part of our, our Christmas tradition. And over the years, most of our, our most important ornaments are the ornaments that are homemade ornaments. They're the little reindeers that our kids made in kindergarten or stuff like that so um that's that's pretty cool um our our family our immediate family our our three kids are making a real effort to not commercialize christmas not from a religious point of view but from a commercial point of view and they've asked us cut back on the gift giving cut back on the things that you give the grandchildren because it's just it's just too gone much. it's just it's it's just too much Food is a big part of it, and uh, we're sitting here eating my wife's wonderful Christmas baking as we watch his show. So, <laughs> very nice, yeah. very nice. Thank you, Michael. Denzel, uh, how about you? Oh, he, he's not listening. Okay, we will move to Ian in New Zealand. Turn myself on first. Well, firstly. Um, uh, wonderful to hear the um, of the Mexican Christmas. Um, got me completely confused. Fortunately, we all think we all seem to be talking about the same God, but by gosh, you certainly uh, overdo it a bit in Mexico. I don't think I'd have enough presents to last for uh, over across <laughs> two three months there. But very uh, very interesting. A point said here I didn't realise had a Christmas significant and that will now take on a, a new meaning in my life. Um, our Christmas here in New Zealand, well, in the past uh, month, I seem to have attended a fair few Christmas parties 
in my rugby club has our Christmas party tomorrow. I think I have actually had two on at the same time tomorrow. If I can't, I can only do the rotary club one. I've got one more. And then thank goodness that's out of the way. And when it comes to Christmas, uh, our son lives in the city and so does his son and his family. Uh, and the most important person of all is a little two and a half year old great grandson. Uh, and um, we shall probably uh, worship him uh, as much as the Lord uh, when we see him on Christmas Day. Um, work uh, in my in my working life. I, as an aside, as some of you appreciate, I was uh, a law enforcement officer, and I have to say, many Christmases, I somehow I seem to get tied up in a murder inquiry, and I forget to uh, get the presents or pick them. One year, I forgot to pick up the presents my wife wanted me to pick up. I think on Christmas Eve, I went to the bar and we had a few drinks. Then I shot up town to pick up the gifts she bought for me and the shop had closed until the middle of January. Not a very good year, that one. Uh, another year, I got tied up on a murder inquiry on Christmas Day and, and realised I and maybe it had gone for a few days, I don't know, but I, I didn't have a present and I, I rang up, I saw an advertisement. We'd been talking about getting a dog and I saw an advertisement for a puppy and so I rang up and... Uh, and they still had one left. So I drove to this place and got the puppy and uh, I put it in a beer cart and wrapped it up in Christmas paper. And later in the day, when I went to where my wife was, was having a real Christmas day with her uncle and auntie and gave them this little dog. Uh, I got a whole raft of stories like that. You'd, you'd die listening. Um, I think the only thing that, one thing that bugs me a little, I, I notice, um, and particularly uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the people present here today come from Canada. One of the things I cannot work out is why, in a country like this where we rely on farming and we grow uh, cattle and and sheep, millions of them, and I would have thought a fair few pigs. But sometime when I'm looking for my Christmas ham, and I was having a look yesterday and put it off for next week. I discovered that our ham is coming from Canada, or the pork. I, I, I don't think this is quite right. How on earth could you grow a pig? And, and no offence to you Canadian people, I know you grow pig. I've been, I spent a lot of time in your country, but how could you grow a pig and then cut it up, or kill it and cut it up, and then send it all the way here, and it can come into my Costco or my supermarket at a competitive price. I just can't work that out at all. <laughs> but uh, it is Christmas. It's the same God, and um, God bless you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ian. So very good, very good. How about... I just want to ask Ian a question, if I may. Um, sure. Ian, I understand how you're confused about canned pigs from Canada, but you know what? We have wonderful wineries here in BC, and yet I buy Cab so from New Zealand. How does that work? <laughs> oh. oh, well, yeah, you, well, it's good stuff you get from New Zealand, good wine. Um, there's that bit of a lake there uh, uh, down from you, uh, Okanagan, isn't it? And uh, I went there one time with a rotary friend. I think the lake's about 125, 130 miles or kilometres, I can't remember now long. And it's, it's about the same number. Hmm? It's How many? Just a little lake. Just a little yeah. lake. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, but there's about 130 wineries there. I only got to about five. Now, I <laughs> did a, a personal challenge to try every Chardonnay in the world, and I, unfortunately, I started far too late. But they didn't have many Chardonnays going along that lake. I was a bit disappointed in that, but they did have a lot of other wine. So I enjoy the Canadian wine, and I've. Uh, I'll eat, I'll eat the ham, but it just doesn't seem quite right in my heart somehow. <laughs> so how about Loxy from Minnesota? I'll share that um, I'm from a small town and we have uh, still the tradition of the children getting dressed for sun, for this the Christmas pageant. And uh, at times have changed. It isn't necessarily exactly right near Christmas. It could be 
uh, at near the like closer to the January 6th, depending on when the kids are done with their school breaks and then they come back and then we do the Christmas pageant. But a couple of years ago during COVID, the, the churches weren't open and uh, yet the pastor of what Lutheran church wanted to have the nativity. And it was going to be um, children dressed up with a real animals brought in from a local farm. And then it was like 10 below zero. And I thought they're certainly not going to have it. And I did not go because it was so cold, but it was televised or we could watch it on through the web and or the, the television or the website. But anyway, um, the children were dressed up and the animals there were there in hay and little fences. And the pastor, I thought this was hysterical, was up in the building, looking down from the building. He was warm, nar helping narrate the scene. And the children, meanwhile, were down by the animals and they were all dressed up as the angels and the shepherds and the wise men. And they, uh, they must've had a, a, a snowmobile suits on or something like that. Cause how could they have done that? I mean, it was, it was the best Christmas pageant ever for me to watch. And I thought those children, you got to bless them over and over again. Anyway, that's well, all I'll share. For that. Thank you. Uh, so Sita, how do you celebrate your holidays? Because you may have a special holiday too. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, actually um, we celebrate, uh, we call the Dosai uh, in Nepal and we are Hindu, but uh, you know, like a Christian, like um, um, uh, uh, we are also try to celebrate, you know, we are not Christian, but in the Rotary, we do lots of function and the children, they like to make a, um, a tree or at home and celebrate. And we don't know the reason. We don't know the anything, but the children, you know, all kind of children, they study together. They like to celebrate. And uh, also I follow the Sai Baba. Um, uh, so I read there in the book and I, um, he teach us we should respect all kind of cultures and we should celebrate. And so we celebrate the Christmas. We invite like a lots of needy people, like a 700, 800 people and we cook the food and we, we um, you know, give them food and we celebrate. I know that way and um, whatever I travel, I like to learn and I like to go to um, Sunday church and I feel so good. So I visited so many church, whatever, I uh, Philippines, in America, other place also. So I always willing to learn. So and Christmas time, we buy the red dress, we just wear, but we don't know that much meaning. And we just plan in so <laughs> even in the, there is a Christmas dinner, there is a dasai, there is a tiar. Tiar we call to sister festival. We celebrate five days, um, like, um, uh, we come uh, respect the crow, we respect the dog, we respect to blue bull, we respect to cow and brother and sister, five days festival. And we celebrate same way, like a lots of light for five days and uh, uh, light festival. And thus I, nine days we worship we just family go to pray and temple, come back and other five days we get the blessing and get the gift. But long time back, we celebrate very simple way, no commercial. It's more beauty, more um, attachment with the family. And this, uh, nowadays it's more commercial. People are buying gear, people are have, they say, oh, that's I, we have to give this, that, but all kind of people cannot celebrate same way. So me also, I follow, I don't want to sell, like uh, share the gift. I want to celebrate. So I, okay. I just celebrate the different way also. It's more peaceful, more attachment with the family, more time, you know, so that kind of things. But I don't know that much about the um, uh, Christmas like that, but today I learned a lot. And I will share this special knowledge with other friends. But all kind of culture is always celebrated. And I really enjoy it. Thank you. Well, thank you, Sida. So the next one here in front of me is Mary Ellen. Hi, everybody. I live in Louisville, Kentucky now. Uh, very traditional American background. But I would just say some things as things evolve as we've been talking about. 
Uh, I grew up in Maryland with a very extensive family, so Christmas was all about family gathering at the grandparents and many cousins and that sort of thing. Um, well, now I live in a and and for 40 years live in a city where we don't have extended family. Uh, so sometimes it was bringing international students to uh, our Christmas table, that sort of thing. But one change for me that I got from my husband uh, after we were married, uh, I was used to a Christmas Day dinner. And in his family, they had Chris, the big dinner at Christmas Eve, so that on Christmas, you didn't have to worry about preparing food. You know, you ate the leftovers, as was mentioned earlier. And I adopted that quickly. I really like that. <laughs> Um, and then um, um, maybe 10 years ago or so, I decided to surprise my adult children uh, by preparing a Japanese meal, Japanese skiaki, and they love it. They have always loved it. So it was like a special treat. Not only did they like it, they said, we want this to be our new tradition. So now instead of turkey or the like, uh, we have a, a, a Japanese meal where the food is cooked there at the table. And we do that Christmas Eve. And then our Christmas day is kind of uh, go visit friends uh, or have a quiet uh, time together. So um, things evolve. And I think that's that's the way it should be. And uh, same thing, we, we exchange gifts, but so much less than than uh, than we did, you know, growing up. That's not the the purpose. It's the family gathering that that matters. But we have made changes from from my my childhood to uh, to now. So thank you for letting me share. Okay, thank you, Mary. So uh, Madhu, what do you do in your special holidays? Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for sharing your uh, stories. Here in India, I live in the eastern part of India. So here in India, uh, we uh, have carnivals. Um, India being a big country, every part of uh, India celebrates in a very different way. There are some states where there are more Christians. So those celebrations are very different from the other states where there are less Christians. And uh, where I come from uh, here, uh, we have a, a carnival and uh, I go to my favorite bakery and would buy a plum cake or, uh, and you know, uh, make a chicken roast uh, for Christmas day. And uh, I would attend the midnight mass. Uh, so, because I've studied in a Roman Catholic school where Mother Teresa, uh, used to be an English teacher. Uh, of course, when she was a teacher, I was not born, but uh, uh, my mom uh, was taught by her. And uh, so I would go and attend the midnight mass. I really enjoy that. And, uh, you know, it's very warm because by uh, all of your standard, uh, the temperature at this moment is 20 degrees centigrade. So it's a very warm. And, uh, but, you know, Calcutta is pleasant during this time of the year because our summers are terrible. And uh, so I just enjoy uh, the time, the moment, and that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Madhu. So I have next uh, Diana. Diane. OK, thank you. Um, yes, we may be in America, but we Swedes are just insufferable when it comes to our heritage. So I'm 100% Swedish. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I have a grandfather um, who never lost his Swedish accent because he was an immigrant. And the other grandparents that that I had um, were children of immigrants from Kansas and then from Chicago. And I miss the my childhood. We celebrated differently. There was more snow then. Gosh, in the 50s and the 60s, we would have a Christmas Eve and we celebrated by doing the um, children's program at church. And then we came home and had supper, um, dinner, I guess, and opened presents Christmas Eve. And then Christmas morning, I, I remember, I actually remember it fondly. We'd get up at five o'clock in the morning, or rather the parents would wake us at five o'clock in the morning. And it was always freezing cold and there would be lots of snow on the ground and we'd go crunchy, crunchy, crunchy up to church for the Yulata service. And that started at six o'clock and it was all candle lit. And then the sun would come up during the service and you'd finally have light. And then of course we all went downstairs and had coffee and, and vetebrud and cookies and stuff like that because Swedes are all about food and coffee and, and, and glug, have my glug. 
ready to <laughs> to go. And I have my lingonberries because you got to have lingonberries for the Swedish pancakes. But the only baking I've done so far um, are the rosettes. Mm -hmm. Those are individually made. Um, but I also do a lot of spritz. The grandchildren want the spritz. They're, that's their favorite. Any recipe that starts with take a pound of butter has got to be a really good one, right? Um, lots of almonds in Swedish cooking too. So I grew up in a in the Swedish Evangelical Mission Covenant Church in America. <laughs> so we always did lots of Swedish things like the Santa Lucia. And I have my great grandparents' Lucia tray. That's the tradition where the a daughter, and I made my daughter do it a couple times when my parents were visiting, um, takes the the coffee and the creamer and the sugar and a bunch of cookies and puts candles on her head because Santa Lucia did that in Rome in in the um, the caves to get food and water and I don't think she was bringing coffee around but maybe wine who knows um, to the Christians who were hiding in the the caves in Rome so they celebrate that usually around December the 13th I don't do that anymore but that's about when I get really serious about the baking um, and then got to have our our Swedish pancakes in the morning and the coffee cake and then there's the Swedish meatballs no one will eat fruit soup which is fruit soup with me they just don't like it and they're not really fond of brown beans either I do not understand it um, it's a very different kind of a bean. If you ever try to do Swedish brown beans, they may look vaguely like kidney beans, but they're definitely not. They're, there's something else. So yeah, a lot of food and a lot of family. And we always came back. Um, and after the, before we opened presents, you couldn't open presents until um, we read this, um, Luke. We had to read the Christmas story in Luke chapter two. Um, and then it was okay to open presents. And then you got to talk to your friends on Sunday morning, uh, not Sunday morning, Christmas morning, and talk about what it was that you had gotten the night before or wear your, your clothes or whatever. So we don't do quite that much, that amount now. Um, it's just that no one does Yulata anymore. <laughs> I can't understand why. <laughs> and I'm in Wisconsin, mid-state Wisconsin, and there is no snow on the ground at all. It's horrible. Um, the ice on the lake is only about a half inch to an inch thick, although there are some idiots out there ice fishing a little bit further south on the lake from me. Um, so I'm crossing my fingers that we do get some snow. I would like to have some snow you know you could just bring it two inches at a time or something so i can shovel it but it would be really nice to have some snow um however the ski runs are open they're making snow so it's cold enough for it so you can you can ski down the hills we don't have any mountains but they got some hills even though they call them mountains thank you very much alicia it was really wonderful hearing about all of the traditions Thank you. United States is such a mishmash that we all have family traditions that come from all sorts of different countries. My daughter-in-law has some German traditions because she's a Henrik Zosterberg, not Swedish at all. It was a mixed marriage. Thanks. Well, thank, thank you, Diana. So I don't know. Nikhil, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Well, I yes, I'm not muted. Yeah, yeah. better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sheena, can Sheena hear us? I can hear you. Yeah, I was sharing uh, the different uh, traditions that we all have during the uh -huh. holiday. Would you like? You might tell a different version to me. Be a bit careful there. What she says. <laughs> Yeah. Might not be true. <laughs> we, no, yeah, we, we don't have anything like um, the celebrations that people in other countries do, I don't think. I'm Scottish heritage, and when my parents were alive, we used to 
do sort of first footing at midnight and bring special stuff into the house, black bun and coal and stuff for the new year. But we don't do any of that now. We have a very casual Christmas. Um, and it's large, it's summer, so it's largely um, around a barbecue. Wow. Um, Christmas stockings are put up. Children usually get up very early in the morning and open their stockings. Um, we don't oh, wow. do very much else. We have a special Christmas breakfast, which is, you know, just simply a cooked breakfast because we don't normally have that. Um, and then usually a barbecue for dinner. That's our family. I mean, other families have more traditional ones. Do you, Ian, do you have the big roast still? Ian. Yeah. No, I, I, he uh, has Canadian ham. I, I told him <laughs> about the story before you got here, I think, perhaps, and, and I didn't deal with the dinner in as much accuracy as you have, Sheena, but um, now we, a bit of a mixture, yeah, we have a, mainly have a big lunch, this time I'm going to um, a nephew's house for lunch and then we'll have other half of the family at my place for dinner, which will be a barbecue, as you mm. described. Mm. Yeah, much more casual, somebody, um, actually, uh, Roberta Lee here from our tour, um, emailed me this morning and said, or yesterday, and said, um, you know, I hope you have a nice Christmas, but I don't think you have nearly as much madness as we do here in the States. So um, I think yeah. she may have been to New Zealand for Christmas once yeah. and realised how casual it is. Mm. Do yeah. most people in New Zealand have Christmas trees? Yes. You put up a Christmas tree and do lights on it and everything? Yes, yes, we, okay. we have this Christmas tree lights. We have um, our neighbourhood, there are pockets in our neighborhood that have lots of lights outside oh. that are like a tour that people go around. Oh, yeah. Personally, nice. we don't in our family, but we do have a tree. Yes, we have a tree and a centerpiece on the table that's Christmassy with candles. Nice. Yes. Mm. That's good. Denso. We haven't heard from Denso. Denso. Denso is yeah, frozen. Denso. I think Denso. it's frozen. Denso, can you hear us? I just wanted to, to, to comment that, that hospitality is a central theme of Christmas, but Sheena, um, through the ITHF, hosted both Enoch and I for a wonderful visit when we were in New Zealand a few years ago. So it's really wonderful to see Sheena here. And I, I was hoping that maybe one of the wonderful Rotary hosts we had when we were in New Zealand would show up. So hi, oh, well, I've, I've shown up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I will have to say the same about Sheena. Uh, I visited uh, New Zealand about six or seven years ago, I think. And uh, Sheena was just a wonderful host. She was just terrific. I mean, she had already moved out of Auckland and she actually came over and spent three days. And, two, you know, I, I stayed at a hotel, but she would come and get us and, and took us all over the place, my sister and I. So... I have beautiful memories of New Zealand because of her. Can we ask Denso to tell us? Denso, oh, tell back. us how to celebrate Christmas. There or he is. Now. Now. June, June in the background here. We're in Ottawa, Canada. And mm -hmm. uh, we, hello, all. Bon, bonsoir, bonsoir day. It's my, <laughs> or in Afrikaans, my other language is from South Africa, Renant. And, ah. Fasi and the Carfias, blessed Christmas and all that. So the way I celebrate Christmas is um, just have a drink and sing some funny songs with the Hash House Harriers. It's a club for drinkers with a running problem. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing that tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds, and, good. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. Sounds <laughs> good. So June, June yeah. actually goes to church and things like that. And I, I, I go to church once a year. And so far, I've done it just about every year for... 15 years that we be, we left Winnipeg mainly and we now live in Ottawa and uh, so far the church hasn't burnt down which I'm very thankful for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tomorrow we do get around and sing some sing some songs at the uh, and we go for a walk we actually we actually do as a walking running club we do actually oh. get exercised you know we do get out I mean we don't just sing and drink People think that's what we do, but no, <laughs> we actually get drink. We, we actually get exercised. Some of our runners in Winnipeg have done the hundred mile races, and oh my um, gosh, yeah, oh. They've, they've got from from doing nothing. Now there was literally just walking 
five kilometers if they could <laughs> to doing 100 kilometers and marathons. I've done quite a few marathons myself. Wow. That, that, that was uh, separate to uh, my uh, drinking years, but <laughs> which are not behind me. <laughs> still, still ahead of me. I'm, I'm a young 79, June's 82, so we've got a few drinking years ahead of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. That's great. Yeah. So so it is another... interesting as thought too. I think it was Mary Ellen saying that we evolved. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in Colombia, South America, with oh. some similar traditions to the Mexican ones, but not quite mm -hmm. the same. But it was very interesting as as I listened to her uh, about remembering that we had uh, what they call the posadas. We call them the novenas, and, and we mm -hmm. did we do do that the nine days before Christmas, and. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it was a very uh, religious oriented holiday mm -hmm. when I was a child. Yes. But as I moved to the United States and <laughs> I joined uh, my ex-husband's American family, I moved into the more uh, Presbyterian celebrations. And mm -hmm. uh, although they were religious, they did them on the 25th. So like Mary Ellen, we kind of adapted and we had like, you know, my Catholic church going on Christmas Eve. But then we mm -hmm. have the regular dinners on, on the 25th. Right. But the That's interesting right. part was to switch from the uh, baby Jesus belief, because like in Colombia, baby Jesus brings you the gifts on during the night to switch mm -hmm. to Santa Claus type thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, now, now my celebrations are mostly interesting, way, like Sita was saying, I actually do it with Rotary. And uh, like tomorrow, I'll be going to a Santa's breakfast for 200 children. That, you know, that we're making sure that they get to see Santa and they are getting all a book as a gift because oh, uh, nice. I believe that instead of a toy, we should really good, good, continue good. to improve literacy. So, mm -hmm. so we give it a, a book to every child. Santa gives the book to every child as he comes and takes the picture. So it's, it's great. We just kind of all adapt to over the years to whatever the place we're living in. Yeah. Mm. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anybody else wants to share anything? I I thank you all for uh, staying up late or getting up early, whichever it is. I'll and, tell you. Uh, I do I'll have tell you. that you have fantastic holidays, whatever your celebration continues to be. And do spread the word tonight with some of your friends and tell them Alicia will be repeating this tomorrow morning. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah. so uh, we hope to reach uh, another uh, group. And uh, um, Sheila left us. Um, we want to ensure that if you uh, haven't uh, signed up to go to Melbourne, Australia next uh, May, that you do and that you considered uh, the ITHF uh, trip to Tasmania, that unless they get enough people, they won't be able to actually do it. But uh, do go into the webpage, check us out, check the different programs that we do post them there, uh, check the connections letter, um, ensure, well, obviously if you're here, you do get all the emails and um, help us to, built their ITHF membership up. Uh, we're working very hard at uh, continuing to bring you these programs and also to organizing actual trips for those who can take them. Um, I just, uh, Sheila and I just came back from Dream the team. most wonderful experience that we had in Brazil. We had 23 ITHFers <laughs> together and the Brazilian trip was just absolutely outstanding. And thank you for posting one of Sheila. Sheena and you both, uh, I was able to follow the trip from your post, so thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me yeah. have something to say, uh, Likia. Oh, yes, sorry. Um, can I go on to a fair, what I consider to be a serious issue regarding the convention? Um, as you, you know when it is, all of you, um, it's in May, June in Victoria, which is not a holiday period. And... Mm. With the registration the way it is at the moment, where you have to you have to register for five days, 
We, I know of a number of younger people who simply cannot take time off work to attend at that time. And I've already written a letter to an email to John Hugo and to Stephen Lamont, who's um, a, on the organising committee here, requesting and pleading that they have a registration for just the weekend because they're excluding younger people from attending because they can't take time off work at that time of the year. It's the mm. end of the financial year in Australia. It's also the middle of the school term. So mm. any younger teacher would not be able to take time off. And so they're being excluded. Um, I have a member in my club who is an accountant. She just said, I cannot I cannot pay, for us it's $700 to attend for only two yeah. days. Yeah, it's very so expensive. I've, written, yeah. I've written, written a letter to John Hugo asking that they open up registration just for the weekend, but whether they will continue, can consider that, I don't know. But I think it's a significant issue at a time when Rotary is desperately trying to recruit and retain new members. Hmm. Yes. Good point. Yes, so uh, I don't know. And the I think the from what I can gather, I don't know specifically, the actual registrations from Australia are uh, less than from other countries because oh. because of that problem. Um, and it's, it's quite expensive and the airfares in Australia at the moment are crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and so people can't afford to come to the conference, which is a pity. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you've got any influence at all, if you could um, <laughs> consider, you know, if you know somebody who's on the organising committee or has any influence, if you could just mention that perhaps they could open up the registration to just a short, you know, single days or the weekend to enable younger people to go. Mm. Well, what would the, uh, in Australia, in Melbourne, um, what will the weather be like in May? That's the end of May, it's May 25th. There's some people here mm -hmm. that have concerns because they said it's going to be your winter or approaching your winter it and it'll be darker great. earlier. And oh. uh, it's, it's very expensive to even fly over there from... Yeah you know, from where we are. So I don't know. Well, our, our, um, it, yes, it will be um, winter. winter. Um, it could be damp and cool, but it, in comparison to your winter, I mean, we don't have snow ever. Um, you know, the <laughs> minimum, right. minimum temperature might be, well, the maximum temperature during the day might be 15. Um and it might be showery. Um, mm. We don't have that extreme weather that you have, but um, it, yes, it will be cool. Um, I wouldn't pack, <laughs> unless you're doing lots of um, travel around Australia to the northern part of Australia, you won't need to pack your summer clothes. <laughs> That's for Don't sure. pack your summer clothes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, Patty, so you just have to... Uh, if you have an Alexa, you just ask Alexa. Yeah. You know, what the weather well, is. I, I actually <laughs> have. I have done that, but I don't like the results I get. So I try to <laughs> say well, maybe yeah. uh, somebody who actually lives there can tell me differently, but they're all yeah, kind no, of it, the it same could thing. It yeah. could be, it could be, um, well, again, it's hard to predict, but we are um, heading into winter then, and it could it might be fine. Um, cool but fine, but we may have showery. Um, we don't get um, torrential rain like um, Portland, Oregon, like yeah. Sydney, or northern, yeah. or the more northern <laughs> areas. But yes, you would certainly pack your coat and umbrella, and, and you well, would. See, that, for me, that's that. That's kind of a. The, it's a little disappointing because I have been to Australia, quite a bit of it. And uh, and New Zealand, but I was there in January. Yeah. It was marvelous. Yeah. I was in shorts. It was beautiful weather. Where it was really bad back where I live. So I, you know, I'm going. If I go there again, and I'm gonna, oh, I don't know. 
Yes, yeah. No, I want it to be sunny everywhere I go. <laughs> well, it may, you know, it won't be sunny necessarily, that's for sure. But if you could just, yeah. have, if you happen to know anyone on the organizing committee, I think. I will. They're, um, yeah. I think they are making it difficult to attract young people. It sounds people like it. Because, uh -huh. because it is in the middle of a work period. It's not a holiday period for us. And younger people would attend, I think, if they had the option to go on the weekend. But mm. at the moment, that's not an option available. So. Yeah, it never has been before. So I no. don't know if they'll do that again. Wow. No, it's time to consider it, I think. Yeah, things have got to oh, change yeah. in Rosary. So if they want to attract new members or um, retain the younger members, they've got to, they've got to think beyond, outside the square a little bit. No. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Well, guys, it's uh, almost Merry Christmas. Almost 10 happy 30, New Year. So it's time yes. to <laughs> yeah. celebrate. Merry so Christmas a, to everyone. Happy, happy okay. holiday. Merry Christmas. And uh, look forward to seeing you next month.